Hi, welcome to Star Property TV's Inspiring Individuals Interview Series. Today we have Mr. Mark Chua, who is a former employee and author of the book entitled Who Says You Can't Be Rich Working a 9 to 5 Job and also the face of the movement 9 to 5. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for Hi. coming. Thanks for having me, Ernest. Excellent. For the benefit of our viewers today, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, there's nothing special about me, really. Um, I'm just a normal guy from a normal middle class family. Um, I've been in banking for about 17 years. So I was a career banker and, a, and an employee as well. And uh, at the same time, um, you know, I decided to write a book. And this book basically chronicles my journey both as an employee and also as an investor. Okay, because I'm a big lover of uh, properties. And for the most part, I think I had a great career and I'm, I also loved uh, my job in banking. So I just wrote this book hopefully to inspire others, you know. And um, you mentioned a little bit about myself. Um, well, I guess the only thing that, um, that I believe by strongly is that um, something my parents actually taught me, um, talent is overrated. You know, they always believe that if you put smart effort into developing yourself, um, you know, things will actually be more worthwhile. And I think that uh, that really resonates with me because um, not being humble about it, I'm not born with any special talent. So, yeah, it's a lot of hard work which uh, other successful people um, do, which I try to emulate as well. Oh, okay. okay. Tell me a little bit about your background in banking. I mean, was that your first <coughs> career, first career choice? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, not, not really a first career choice, uh, if I'm being very honest about it. Um, I think I was one of those many people that uh, graduated and we didn't really know what to do. Um, so the first thing I did was when I graduated, I think it was in 2000 or 2001 thereabouts, um, it was very hard to get any job. And my first job was actually doing credit card sales in a shopping mall. Wow, okay. okay? Um, so um, I never regretted that because that was the first job where Literally, it develops your, your mental strength and your skill because I was literally told off, um, had profanity shouted at me. And when you close a sale though, you feel nothing but satisfaction because they are trusting you. They are not trusting the product per se. Um, then from, um, from credit card sales, I got good opportunities from certain bosses and I rose the uh, career ladder. Yeah? So um, I think that one thing why I wanted to hopefully inspire others is that um, many people, okay, I, I, I know I may be jumping about, but many investment books which I've read um, from a very early age, they seem to um, have a kind of demeaning or degrading kind of philosophy on employees. Like, oh, you know, you have no future as an employee or being an employee sucks, that kind of thing. And just focus on investing, investing, investing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that message per se. But to me, your earned income and your passive income is two sides of the same coin. So what I was trying to impress on is that passive income just doesn't fall from the sky. You need a very strong conduit of earned income to be able to invest. Hence, I always coin this mantra, the more you earn, the more you can actually invest. And I was very fortunate and lucky. I don't mean to blow uh, the trumpet, but at the age of 33, I was one of the youngest uh, senior vice presidents in a bank. And that really, really allowed me to actually grow my portfolio. Working in one bank only? No, 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 of course not. Um, I went, uh, I think I changed about uh, five different banks. But one thing that people don't know, of course, the first thing they do is they accuse me of being a promiscuous kind of person that jumps <laughs> here, left, right and centre. Um, but one thing that they don't realise is that for most part, I think 80% of the journey, I followed the same boss or the same sets of bosses. Okay, okay. so that really helped me in my career as well. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us how did you decide to write this book and what was the inspiration behind it? Well, um, at risk of repeating myself again, um, it's the same, same concept like what I mentioned earlier because most of the books, uh, they tend to degrade employees and I just wanted to chronicle um, uh, my, my, my key message out. And the key message is this, um, that, that prompted me to write the book. There's no shame in being an employee, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, because like it or not, not all of us are born with uh, the gumption or the courage or the attitude for entrepreneurship. But if you know yourself that you're not bound for entrepreneurship, then you better, forgive my language, you better damn well do well as an employee. You know, and again, I think that it's all in your mind. If you're an employee, there's no reason why you can't make yourself a better one. 
Okay, the funny thing about it is that I'm a hardcore uh, lover of properties and I actually spent a lot of technical time and skill to improve my investment skills. Mm -hmm. However, at the same time, when people talk to me and they say that, oh Mark, you're just lucky. You know, you flew up the ladder lucky because you had good bosses. Uh, you're lucky because you got those promotions fast. You're lucky because you have a great team. You're lucky because you know how to play corporate politics very well. Then my standard reply to them is, wow, if I'm so lucky, why would I want to torture, not torture, why would I want even want to work for 17 years? I'll just go and strike a, a lottery jackpot. You know, so my point is there's a same amount of equivalent skill that you need to invest yourself in that workplace as well. So I hope that this book is unique because it chronicles uh, employees' context in terms of how you can improve your career and at the same time translate that higher earnings into property investment. Okay, let me uh, repeat what you <coughs> just said. And I think mm. in summary, what you're saying is that this book actually is your journey. Yep, and the, you wanted to share this information with anybody who is on the path of either being an employee mm -hmm. or considering becoming an entrepreneur. But while they're considering that and they're still an employee, they can still grow their net worth and wealth. Precisely. And you're trying to link it with property and property investment. Would that be correct? Yes, that's right. Because um, um, again, this is another incident that prompted me. So the first thing, let me recap, is basically the philosophy of the more you earn, the more you can invest. So basically, the book doesn't just talk about how you invest. It shows how you can hopefully earn more and how you can actually fire up your career ladder as well. Right. The second key message is this. Very often, I notice most employees, by default or by nature or by design, they hate their jobs. They hate their bosses. They hate everything about it. The next thing you know, they are inspired by some investment personality. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is what I've seen many times. They go for a course, they get learnings, they buy, let's say, two properties in succession, which is fine, but they realize that their pay of, let's say, 5,000 ringgit is still stuck at 5,000 ringgit, and they can't move any further. And then depression sets in because they are stuck in a job which they hate, with bosses that they hate, stuck with that same 5K salary as well. So something's got to give. If you want to continue leveraging smartly, and investing, like it or not, your earned income also has to grow in order for you to scale more effectively. So it sounds to me that you're actually offering practical advice in terms of how to become a better employee. Of course. Can you share a little bit about what insights are you sharing in this book? Sure. Um, for example, um, if let's say you buy um, a, a, a property, let me put it into a way that's hopefully relatable to viewers. It's like a science. Find uh, location, location, location. Uh, find below market value properties. Um, look at the infrastructure. Look at boosters, whether it's near shopping malls or etc. Look at the affluence of the of the people, right? So there's a whole set of criteria which I also talk about in the book as well. But we'll come back to that later. Now, similarly, from a career context, there are also many steps if you like to actually follow. So, for instance, I found that people that did very well in their career, it's not a matter of this, uh, chance. There's always a godfather on top of them pulling them up. So the first thing that you normally do when you go to any organization is you identify a mentor or a godfather figure to invest in you. And like it or not, you need that person to actually pull you up. You approach that mentor and ask for his mentorship and for his guidance. Okay, and that makes that person vested in your success. That's number one. Another practical tip which I give in the book is this, appraisals. How often do we do appraisals? The standard appraisal, maybe once a year, which um, you know, many people, many bosses like yourself also do to your staff. But I found that if you do appraisal once a year, you're more or less dead. Okay? Appraisals should be done every month and it should be initiated by the employee. Be aggressive in the sense that you go to your bosses and sit down next to him and say, what am I doing wrong, boss? Is there anything that I can do right? And you make corrective action month on month. And when it comes to the appraisal time, and providing you have been doing this cons consistently, there's no reason for your boss not to promote you. So these are just some of the yeah. things that I try to. Sounds very much like the Japanese Kaizen method. Yeah, Small in incremental improvements in a very timely manner. Precisely, precisely. Well done, well done. How yeah. long did it take for you to write this book? I mean, you said 17 years of career, condensed yeah. into how long to write this? Um, actually, I'm kind of a workaholic, so uh, I work, uh, yeah, I, I, I work pretty long hours, I, yeah, maybe 17, 18 hours a day. Um, for me to write the manuscript of this book took me fairly fast, two months. Wow. But it took me one year to refine it, to beautify it, to edit it, and so on and so forth. 
If you could yeah. go back in time, give mm -hmm. yourself this book, what would you have done differently? That's a very difficult question. Um, and I will actually speak from the heart. Okay? Um, like it or not, it's very easy to look back in hindsight mm -hmm. and to say that I wish that I had learned from this and this and so on and so forth. Um, but I don't regret a thing because the mistakes that I've made made me who I am. Okay? And that's how a person grows. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, because I don't believe in beating around the bush as well, I realised uh, very much, I mean, throughout my journey, that technical skills are important, but they are not paramount. For example, in the book, I talk a lot about technical skills, like people always ask me, Mark, if you're working 12 hours or 13 hours a day, how do you manage your current portfolio? How do you manage your tenants? And I give very practical tips as well in terms of how to manage a growing portfolio uh, without jeopardising your career. That's one side of it. But the other side which I wish I had known earlier is there's a commonality between career and property investments. There will be people. Okay, a lot of people often underestimate this people element into it. Let me give you an example. Like what you mentioned earlier about how do you handle your bosses, how do you handle your colleagues, all these are people management skills. For property, I find that why I love properties is also all about people. For example, if I meet agents, how do I make that person fight for me by giving me good deals? How do I make the agents feel important? If I meet developers or if I meet other stakeholders like lawyers, contractors, etc., etc., how do I make the best in class want to work with together with me? So that's something which I wished, you know, if I knew from day one, wow, you know. <laughs> interesting, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now, let's focus a lot uh, on the next topic, which is the 9 to 5 movement. Sure. What's this movement all about? Um, well, 9 to 5, uh, it's, it's a play on words. Uh, we're not a gangster or something <laughs> organisation. Uh, it, it stands for 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's a moniker, if you like, in terms of how uh, employees are working, right? So it's an organisation of mostly employees. And I'm proud to say that, uh, you know, we are a social enterprise. We're from all walks of life. Uh, we have real estate agents, we have engineers, we have doctors, we have architects, we have journalists, we have bankers. And we all come together to form a support network. And we believe in two things. We believe in, very, we believe in being very balanced. Like what I mentioned, our yin and yang is earned income, whether you focus in your career or your business which translates into property investment. Okay, so we believe in having two subjects in all our meetings and how we can actually grow from there. Well done. Yeah. And is membership, or is this by virtue of membership, or is it just an association of interest, of people come, with the same interest coming together? Uh, good question. Okay, we, a lot of people think we are some elitist uh, organization, like some skull and bones. No, that's not it at all. Uh, all. All we are asking for is that, you know, we welcome people from all walks of life, if let's say um, you are sincere in the sense that you believe in balanced growth, both from an earned and passive income perspective, we are more than welcoming uh, of all these uh, okay. uh, people. Yeah. Is the investment of choice property or other forms of investment as well? There are plenty of investment choices out there, like it or not. Okay, But I think to create focus, to create attention and to create uh, laser sharp execution, you know, we, property is the main choice that we all actually mm. go for. Mm. Okay, it's very easily understandable and um, I must admit, I'm, I know as the founder, I'm, I'm a big lover of properties as well. So yeah, okay. I wouldn't be true to myself if I say <laughs> go for derivatives or go for commodities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what are the planned activities for 2017 since we are coming to the close of 2016? What is, now that you are, should I use the word unemployable? <laughs> so what are planned activities for 2017 when you can drive this full force? Okay. Um, you're right. Uh, basically, um, I I'd just like to clarify something with the viewers, okay? Um, I didn't leave my job because I was jaded or I felt unhappy or anything like that. For the most part, I felt very, very happy with my career. I felt very happy with my job and I actually loved what I do, okay? It's just that things change along the way. Uh, dreams change, okay? I felt one thing that was missing, my ambition. Okay, if I felt that I didn't want to rise higher anymore, that would be very bad for my prodigies, it would be very bad for the second liners and down liners. Because you need to have a boss to actually go, want to go on further. And the reason why I felt that way is because, number one, I felt that maybe at an early age, I have already peaked in that sense, so I felt that I've already accomplished some things. And secondly, 
in all humility, both my five-year-old toddlers, I have two twin boys, they hardly know their father. Mm. So I would like to spend more time with them as well. But at the same time, I need to feel purposeful. I need to feel that I'm doing something to contribute back and with my time. That's why I, I look forward to what you mentioned, to grow 925 to newer heights in 2017. Okay? Um, we plan to actually have a great lineup next year, mm. a 2017 calendar. Um, what we plan to do, loosely speaking, is we have half the year and we, have, we split it, the agenda into two parts. The first half will be basically on um, career mentors, you know, to teach people, to inspire people on how to earn more in order to uh, leverage on property investment. So um, I'm very lucky to have a very good team uh, with good connections. So hopefully uh, we'll get uh, corporate CEOs, we'll get directors of listed companies, NGOs to actually come in to inspire our members. Uh, whilst the other component, if you like, would be um, uh, property investment related. So we'll actually get in seasoned uh, 925 folks or we'll get in uh, seasoned speakers on property to actually come in to give their wisdom. Well so for someone who is fresh, uh, mm -hmm. just started their careers, picked up the book, gets inspired, what do they do next? Um, you mean... After they read the book, what do they do? I mean, is, is there like a form that says... Oh, no, uh, no, no, of course not. Uh, very good question. Uh, at the back of the book, uh, there's a way to reach out to me. Uh, obviously, I'm contactable. Uh, my email and my Facebook is there. Uh, but let me just... Uh, sorry, I don't mean a hard sell. <laughs> but uh, basically, you can contact me... Um, via two ways. Number one is uh, www.facebook.com uh, slash Mark Chua MY. Mark Chua MY. M stands for Malaysia, Y for Yugoslavia. So uh, do have a look and see whether that's something which resonates with you in terms of what I stand for. The other one is a very simple way. Just go to your Facebook, click in 925. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, you'll see a bunch of monkeys there. There will be us. That's the main photo. Uh, click on 925 and there's a form there that says sign up and leave your details that we'll love to hear from you. That's how you join our community. Okay, mm. so does joining a community mean that I have to buy a property within a certain time frame? No, of course not. Um, however, uh, what from experience uh, as a corporate manager, um, I would just like to share uh, my two cents with you. Where I think um, I failed and where I can do better in 925 is this. The level of enthusiasm, the level of commitment from the crowd is just crazy. You know, and most groups, they die off after a few months. But each and every month, we have been for about maybe one year, one month, we are still growing from strength to strength. However, upon honest reflection, I think it's very shocks and deary. I see a lot of happy people. I see a lot of commitment there. But how do I, as the founder, know whether the movement is succeeding? Like what you mentioned. So I think that in 2017, we will want to establish very clear uh, KPIs, if you like. Now, the KPIs is not something that we are trying to insist as a draconian measure, but we need to give people a vision or a tangible goal to move forward to. So from a career aspect, for instance, it could be maybe you, we will put it in such a way you get promotions once a year or once every two years. Or the rate of uh, increments, by the way, it's quite sad. It's about 3% industry-wide. So perhaps we could actually say that a clear measure would be you need to double that 6% then you know whether you're succeeding or not. Now, for property investment, it would be very naive of me to say that, oh, you have to get property A, B, and C. Why? Because each person's profile is very different. But I see nothing wrong with having a generic goal. For example, invest in one property in 2017. Mm. At least it's a call to action. Then from there, we will strip it down to tailor make it to each member, for instance. So you also are providing individualized advice or would it be more of a group thing? Um, I think that, uh, uh, like it or not, you know, if let's say um, each member wants to buy a particular project or whatever, they, they have to be the ones to actually decide from themselves whether it actually is aligned to their risk appetite or whichever okay. or to their profile. What we can do as an organization is just provide them the support network, the, the network or the education behind that. Yeah. You know, Mark, this sounds fantastic. Can mm -hmm. I just get back to maybe one of the questions I still have? I mean, why are you sharing all these nuggets of information and all these golden gems? Why are you sharing this with the public? Why am I sharing this with the public? Well, put it this way. Um, for, for, for me, um, if you have a network like that, I find that there's two things, if I'm being very open about it. I always found that if you give value to other people, mm. 
then people will see the value in you, then uh, the monetary riches or the, 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 the fame, if you like, or the, or the gain that you will get will actually come to you. Okay, so that has always been my philosophy. Okay, and secondly, um, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, when we have this movement or, 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 or whichever, you know, um, I've never hard sell anything in terms of what's my seminars or my consultations, that kind of thing, I intend to give value back first. Mm. And if they see that preliminary value that I give in people with sincerity, then I believe that people will approach me. Well That's my ulterior motive. Well done. Very good. Okay. Um, any last and final thoughts to about this particular book and your new journey, the new chapter? Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, the partnership that 925 has with uh, organization. I'm not too sure whether it's uh, too premature for me to announce it now. Uh, but uh, in due course, you know, uh, hopefully we can actually make that announcement. And um, this partner is somebody which I respect and I think it will help us grow from strength to strength. You know? um, I think any parting words would be basically this. Um, do have a read at the book. You know? um, um, I, I assure you that it may not be something groundbreaking or anything like that, but it may give you a very different perspective Okay, as an uh, employee. Um, I can relate to many of you. Um, I know how it's like uh, living paycheck to paycheck, um, being uncertain about my kids' future, and wondering what I can do to actually earn a decent income and a decent portfolio to help us out. Okay, so I feel for you in that sense. And secondly, uh, in terms of the 925 community, it's a community which I have grown to love. I know all 140 members in terms of their names and in terms of what they do and their families in terms of how many children they have and all that. So they are literally like family to them. I intend to grow 925 as a community, not just as a big bulk buying investment club okay. you know so that will be our differentiator and i hope that you give us a shot well done okay. so mark finally last question where can one get the book um yeah uh, i'm proud to say that uh, you can get it at any mph popular and kinokuniya bookstore yeah um well so done. far the response has been fairly good uh, i'd like to thank um, all the supporters and uh, followers and friends that we have you know so yeah, do get a copy if you happen to be in town. Yeah. Well done. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Mark. I thank know you for very having busy, me. and uh, <laughs> probably even thinking of the second version of the book already. Ah, uh, not yeah. anytime soon. Not anytime soon. <laughs> and yeah. I wish you all the very best. Thank with you the so new much. New career, the new chapter, and with nine to five. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a Star Property TV production. So thanks for coming, Mark. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks.